Today, I will show you how to make your game react to music like this. As I recorded, the video got a little big, so it's going to be a three-part video. Part 1 covers the setup, writing the audio data to a texture, and scaling an object using the beat. Part 2 builds upon that, reacting with color and glow, and includes a custom background. Part 3 will show you how to do the same thing in 2D, including custom particles that react to the beat. This week, I released Lo-Fi Kitten, a game idealized by my good friend and composer Thiago Adamo. The game is essentially a great lo-fi music album in the shape of a puzzle game. Since the game is so musically themed, I wanted to really juice the game with the music, and this is what I'm gonna show you how to do today. So I'm going to start by making my tile react to music. First, I'm gonna go into my mesh. Let me make this unique so I can actually change this over here. And I'm going to create a new shader material. Let's go new shader and this is gonna be 3D musical tile. So let's get started with the shader. First, it is a spatial shader. I'm just gonna use unlit for this. So I'm gonna say this uh, unshaded render mode. So it's not gonna have any light at all. The next thing I'm gonna do on my shader is I'm gonna create a uniform sampler 2D. And I'm gonna say this is my albedo. I'm gonna do the hint source color. I covered some of that in my previous video. So if anything is a little confusing, you can check out the previous video and you'll understand a little bit more about this. Uh, over here, I'm gonna do a texture and I'm gonna take the albedo and I'm gonna use UVs and I'm gonna put this into the albedo. With that, we should be able to place a texture on our tile. So as I said, uniform, it shows over here in shader parameters. I'm gonna take my texture and I'm gonna plug it in here. Now I have my tile with a texture. And so far so good. Uh, the texture is a little pixelated, so I'm gonna go into import settings for it. I'm gonna change the mode to lossless. This is important to get like the right looks when you have a bunch of gradients. And all of the textures here are essentially just these uh, gradients which I like to do my models with kind of like the lazy UVing method. I take each part of it and I just lay it out on a gradient. So if you'd like to learn more about that and see some Blender content on the channel as well, beside Godot, please let me know in the comments. The next step is I need to get some music in here to react to it. So I'm going to come over here, add audio stream player. So the audio stream player is how we play music in Godot. So let me import some of Lo-Fi Kitten's music to this. So I'm gonna plug this in here. I would like for this to auto play. And I would also like for this to loop. So on the import settings for this, I'm gonna come over here in loop mode and I'm gonna say loop forward, re-import. And now my loop is set up correctly over here. So if I play this, I can hear my music. I can't really see anything because I don't have a camera on my scene. So let's fix that real quick. So now I got my camera. Yeah, now I can see my tile, I can hear the music, let's go. Down here in audio, right now it's on the master. Usually when you're making a game, if you're gonna make your game react to music, you want to only react to music and not all the sound effects, you want to create a new bus. Add a new bus, this is gonna be my music bus. And I'm gonna route my music back here in Buzz. I can route it to music instead of the mask. I'm gonna add an effect. This has all sorts of audio effects you can do to amplify your sound and everything. The spectrum analyzer, he doesn't do anything to your audio. He just analyzes the spectrum. When you play the music on Windows Media Player or something, you're seeing all those sound waves. That's the audio spectrum that you're seeing. So we're gonna use this to take that information and use it on our shaders. I'm going to create a new node here, Audio Spectrum Helper, and I'm going to add a script to it. So in my code, uh, we're gonna be using the Audio Effects Spectrum Analyzer. If you control click this, it brings us to that documentation. If we click here in Audio Spectrum Demo, it's gonna bring us here, a demo in the asset library. It shows these sound wave bars with the draw function. I'm just gonna go into the files on the show spectrum and this is what we want to do. I'm gonna copy over some of this. The view count is the amount of bars we are drawing. We are drawing 16 on, for example. I just want seven, keeping it simple. Maximum frequency, I'm just gonna keep the same as what we did. The minimum volume, I'm just gonna keep at 60 as well, min db. We save this effect into this spectrum variable on the ready function. So spectrum is gonna be audio server, get buzz effect instance. Our buzz, the second one, so we're gonna say one. That should be taking a reference to our spectrum analyzer. On process, I'm going to copy this from the draw method and change it for our purposes. Uh, that example was from a Godot 3, new name for the method linear 2db, linear 2db. This height value, I'm gonna make it an export variable so I can control it from the inspector. I'm gonna call it a multiplier because it's not really a height the way we're using it. So this will be my multiplier float. 
export range. So let's say between zero and 10. And this is what we're actually gonna be using. This is the effect. We're gonna print this into the console so we can see what this is gonna do. Uh, this for loop, it starts at zero and then divides the frequency into ranges that are represented by the visual unit meters. It's gonna calculate the magnitude of each of these ranges and determine energy level within that range. Linear to dB converts the magnitude to decibels and by adding the minimum decibel value and dividing by it, it scales the value between zero and one. Then it clamps just to make sure it's gonna stay within that range. So we're gonna be printing this. Before we do this loop, we're gonna print a line so I can see the difference between each. We're gonna print as well the number zero, then how much is at zero, so I can see each one of these bands separately. If I play this, it's not working because my multiplier is set to zero, so, it, so let's say five. So now we can see the values down here. It's not doing anything, but we see that the values are being captured. We want to pass this information into a texture so the shader can use it. So I'm going to create a global texture that any shader can access at any time. And to do that in Godot, we go to project, project settings, and we have the shader globals here. So let's say we're gonna call this the spectrum texture. I'm gonna say this is a sampler 2D, give it a placeholder texture. So when I was doing this before, I had a problem that sometimes it would get deleted. So I'm just gonna go over here in project and reload current project. It deleted my variable. I'm gonna try again. Reload current project. It deleted my variable sampler 3d it deleted my variable again that that's a problem pro many unbearable hours later spectrum please you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put the godot icon in there maybe it doesn't like that it's a placeholder texture maybe that's the problem maybe just it wanted the godot icon you know it's gonna reload the current project and hope for the best it remembers perfect so if you're following along and you run into the same problem godot icon there it really wants the godot icon there i just just put a good icon there. Okay, so now we have our uh, Spectrum, please. I don't like the name, I'm just gonna call it Spectrum Analyzer. Let's try and visualize this. So I'm gonna do a little mesh instance. In this mesh instance quad, let's make this bigger. Let's create a material for this. It's gonna be a shader material. And I'm just gonna call this shader the Spectrum Visualizer. It's a global variable, so we'll start with global. It's a uniform type of uh, sampler 2D. This name here, it needs to be exactly the same as what we have in the project settings, otherwise it's gonna spit an error. So I called it Spectrum Analyzer over here. Or call it Spectrum Analyzer. And because it has the global in front of it, it has the same name as it is in the project settings, this is now a global variable that we're accessing from any shader. Albedo here is going to be the texture, texture Spectrum Analyzer UV RGB. And I'll say the render mode is unshaded, so we don't have any lighting affecting this. So let's go into our code. We're gonna need an image texture so we can actually be writing to it. Image texture on Reggie over here. We're gonna create an image, image, create. The width is gonna be seven because that's the size we decided here on the view count. We could just say this view count so we can change it later. Height is gonna be one. We don't need a lip map and the image format RGBA eight. For I and our view count, we're gonna set the pixel on that spot of the texture. I just put color black to start. So our image texture is setting it as a image texture. Create from image, we're gonna be creating from this image. So we're gonna assign that to our image texture. So we need to actually set this texture to our global variable. So it's gonna be picking up this one. So rendering server, global shader parameter set and it needs to be the same name we gave it on our project settings, which is Spectrum Analyzer, perfect. And we're gonna put our image texture here. So now if we press play, it should show black, and it does. So here now, instead of printing this, we take image texture. I just realized that whenever I'm changing the texture, I actually need the reference for the image. So I'm going to come back, say this is an image, and instead of having this as a local variable, I'm gonna be caching it. So here, instead of image texture set, I need to image, set pixel, I zero, and then for the color, color white and I'm gonna multiply by the effect perfect the next step I actually need to say image texture update with image so now that texture is gonna be updated with the new pixels we set we don't want to do this on each step of the for loop we're gonna bring this outside the for loop so it sets all the pixels and then it updates and now if we press play yes we actually get to see 
this spectrum setting the proper textures there. Five was a little bit too much. Maybe like 1.5 is a little bit better. Back to our shader on the musical notes, I'm going to make for size change with the shader. Make it unique. Material, a new shader material. I'll say 3D musical note. Albedo texture RGB. Plug in my gradients. Render mode, unshade. Void vertex. I'm gonna just copy over the global uniform sampler from over here. So I have my spectrum analyzer. So on my vertex, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sample a piece of this texture. So we're gonna use the UV on the horizontal side and we're gonna pick a place. So we're gonna do texture, spectrum analyzer, and we're gonna create a new vector two. And here we need a value between zero and one, so 0 0.3. And we'll get this RGB, and this will be our um, spectrum value. We might want to use this also on the on the fragment side of the shader. So when we want to set a variable, we can access from multiple places on the shader. We call it a varying, and we're gonna call this our spectrum value, and it's the type float. So in this case, I don't need to say float. It's not a local variable anymore. It is now. It is now a varying variable. So at first I was saying RGB, but in this case, I only want to take the R. I only need one of the values and they're all the same anyway. So, so with this, what I can do is let's say I'm gonna multiply my vertex, which the vertex are like each vertex position in local space. We're gonna be multiplying each by one plus our value. So at least it's gonna multiply by one. It's gonna stay in the same place or it's gonna go higher than one when I'm adding the value to it. And make sure it's a float. So now if I press play, perfect, look at that. Now it's very jittery because the values are changing in real time and I, I don't want things to be this jittery. I'm going to lerp these values. So first I'm gonna create a new variable over here, which is gonna be my uh, lerped spectrum. And this is gonna be an array of floats. On Reggie, I'm actually gonna lerp spectrum dot resize. Then I'm gonna do my view count here that will resize my array. So instead of straight up setting the pixel here for this value, what I'm gonna do is lerp spectrum i minus one, because in this case, we are going on a range of one to view count plus one, but on a regular lerp spectrum, that's not the case, which also applies to the set pixel. So I was actually doing it a little bit off. So this is going to be a lerp between the same value to our new value, which is effect. And we're gonna use the delta. So I had, I had put the underscore in front of the delta. And for the lerp, I'm gonna use delta times four. And this is a magic number, but it's essentially like lerp's moving value. And a lerp is essentially, you're taking two values and you're picking a position between the two. And that third thing you're passing in is the position. And that's something between a zero and one. So when you use the, the delta value there, which is the difference in time between the previous frame that was rendered in the current frame, we can make that smoother. So the, the higher the number of multiplying by here, the quicker it's gonna reach the new value. So the lower the number, like the, the slower it's gonna kind of like be gradually changing. I think something around four or six should work well, but we can play around with this value. We can make it a, an export variable we can use here. So smoothing type float. So this way we can play around with it a little bit easier. So now instead of multiplying by effect, we're actually gonna be multiplying by this value on our array. So let's check that out. So as you can see now, it's way less jittery, smoother. And if we go over to our Audio Spectrum Helper, we can make this faster, like 16. You can see now the jitter is starting to get back, but it's still smoother than it was before. Maybe eight, and it's up to you. You can play around with these values and try to find what feels better for you. So right now, when I'm doing this, I'm actually just saying I want this, the part of the spectrum texture that's around 0 0.3, but that's that's kind of not good because like all of the different things, if I duplicate this around, they're all doing the same exact animation, which is not, is not interesting. On the shader, first, I want to get the position in the world. So there's a thing that's called a node position. And this is a vector free that gives me the exact position of the object in the world. Usually we're dealing with the vertex position. So each one of them is different because it's all the vertices compose the model. In this case, I'm actually getting the object position. So I'm gonna try and get a random number, which is not truly random, but it's gonna function for us as a random number between zero and one. So we can use to pick up the different parts of the texture. And this random number is gonna be based on the position in the world. So it doesn't work for something that actually moves around, but if it's an environment piece that's just 
just standing there in the same place, it's gonna work perfect. So it's gonna be a float random number. And what we're gonna do is gonna take this node position world. That's kind of like a big name. So I'm just gonna create a variable for this and I'm just gonna call like NW. So I'm gonna take NWX just in case we happen to be at a rounded positions so like 0, 0 or 1.0. I'm gonna multiply these values by like some big numbers that have a lot of decimals. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like a each of the position values I'm gonna multiply by a, by a different big number. And honestly, like there might be a better way of doing this. This is just the way I do it. It doesn't really matter what numbers you're using. I just want a big number with lots of decimals. So once I have this random number equals, I'm gonna use fract random number. I'm removing the integer from this and I'm only taking the decimal values. And I'm actually gonna take this random number and I'm gonna make a varying as well so I can use it in fragments if I so desire. So this will be my random number and over here, I'll remove the float. So now this is uh, something I can use in the albedo as well. For visualizing this, instead of uh, using albedo with the texture, let's say albedo is vector free, my random number. And that's something someone taught me in the comments and I'm, I'm loving this. Like, please, if, if you notice something I'm doing wrong or something that I could be doing better, please let me know in the comments. Smax told me this. Oh, and by the way, to create a vector three or vector two or even a matrix with identical values, it can just pass a single value. So yeah, I can just do this. And here we can see what this code is doing. As I move it, you can see the values are changing between zero and one. It's giving me different shades of gray to black to white, which is exactly what we want. And this can be very useful if you are trying to give variation to your things. Oh, maybe I just want to place a bunch of trees, but I don't want to like change the sizes and things one by one. You can use shaders and this kind of value to give variation or like a different color based on where the thing is positioned. There's so many things you can do. So this kind of things in shaders, I use this a lot. So instead of doing the vector two zero dot three, it's going to be vector two random number on my UV there for my spectrum value. So if I press play now, as you can see, different parts of the, the different objects are reacting to the music differently, depending on which part of the texture we're sampling from. And this is where we're leaving off with part one. I'd like to take a moment here to really thank every one of you that watched my previous videos, subscribed to the channel and left comments. It has been an overwhelming feeling. The channel went from three, four subscribers to over 500. Over 8,000 people watched that first video. And the response has been so positive. I'm excited to show you more. I've been juggling a lot of projects lately. I have four games as coming soon on Steam and I just released Lo-Fi Kitten as well. If you want to see some of those, the links are in the description. And if you want to wish list any, it helps me a lot. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot to everyone that commented. I've learned a lot from the comments as well. I'm placing some of the comments on the screen right now. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time for part two.